I'll try to explain what, from a product perspective, we do so differently in the cloud market. And I'm going to do it using kind of like a, a use case, a case study of something you all might have heard about, the log4shell vulnerability. Now, the log4shell vulnerability was a vulnerability discovered roughly a week before Christmas um, in a very in a very popular logging library of Java, Log4j. And it was almost like the perfect storm for organizations because this vulnerability was easy to exploit. It was in Java, which is obviously super popular. So basically, every organization was impacted. And it was easy to exploit. So there was a tight timeline. And organizations were really, really struggling to understand, OK, like, what do I do now? How do I ensure? I mitigate this risk in my cloud environment. And it's actually a perfect example of what WIS does differently and what it is we solve, because organizations discovered that the tools they have today are just unsuitable for the task. So let's dive into why. So let's imagine, right? Let's imagine like you're a CISO at a company, and Log4Shell is disclosed, again, roughly a week before Christmas, and you need to build a mitigation plan, right? And as a CISO, I'm concerned. I mean, I want to know if there are points of risk in my organization I need to make sure are mitigated right away. Like the example we have right here on the graph. What we see here would be my worst fear as a CISO, right? Maybe I have a publicly exposed container that's vulnerable to log for shell, and that container is running on a resource that has high privileges in my cloud. How do I make sure I have a quick plan in place to reduce risk? And I obviously want to start from mitigating things like this, which are an immediate threat to my organization. So let's start from the basics. Am I even impacted? Now, even this seemingly simple question in the cloud proved to be super, super difficult for organizations to estimate. And I'll share a story from, um, from that like two weeks around Log4Shell. Uh, I, we were on a call with a customer. He was actually not even a customer at that point. He was in the middle of a regular WIS POV when Log4Shell happened. So he was deployed on like a fraction of his, of his environment. And because now he had this like burning need to know where is he impacted, he wanted to quickly extend his deployment to his entire production environment. So this is like an emergency. He pulls us fast on the call. And as you all know, it's easy to connect with. But he just needed like somebody from the cloud infrastructure team to make the initial connection. So we joined the call with this customer and this person from his cloud infrastructure team. And he explains to, to that developer what he needs him to do. And he explains why. He tells him, I need to understand if we are impacted by Log4Shell across our production environment. And that cloud infrastructure engineer tells him, why do you need a tool for that? Like, you can just ask somebody from the CI CD team, from the deployment team. So it's an emergency. He adds to the call. He pulls onto the bridge somebody from the CI CD team. And of course, that person goes, I have no idea what developers are running, like what code they're running in the cloud, pulls somebody from the dev team. So you guess what happens? He pulls in somebody from the dev team, which says, oh, like you should ask that guy from the cloud infrastructure team already on the call. So they close the full circle, but it shows two big problems. First, it shows how complex it is in today's development environments to know something like this, right? Like even on the dev side, it's hard to get those answers. But it also shows how troubling it is to be that person on the security team where you own the risk, but he needed four different people to pick up the phone, right? What do you do if nobody picks up the phone? At the end, it's your responsibility to be able to answer those questions yourselves. And when organizations tried to answer those questions themselves, they tried doing that using the tools they had today. And simply put, they failed. Like, there, were, there was no tool in the market except Wiz that was able to show where you are impacted to log for shell across your entire environment. Because tools today are not suitable for the complex architectures we have in the cloud. Like, you can run your applications on the cloud 
you have containers, IaaS, PaaS services. You have so many different ways of running compute. Traditional tools don't really deal with most of that. They deal mostly with IaaS. And of course, that's without even like, going into the question of if I'm reliant on solutions that are based on agents, then of course, I, I already know I'm missing part of the picture. So organizations were not able to even answer the first question of where am I impacted, except for with customers. The next phase here is, let's even assume I know where I'm impacted. But again, this is like a week before Christmas. So I have to understand, what do I patch now? And also, honestly, what do I, I don't patch now, right? And in order to do that, you have to have a very deep understanding of the architecture, of the environment itself. You have to be able to answer questions like, which of my services are exposed? I want to start there. Matika is going to tell you about why that is such a hard question to answer in the cloud. Or you need to know which resources can access what, right? Which of my resources have access to my sensitive data? That is also insanely complex in the cloud. I mean, I have a screenshot here from a blog post that details 100 ways of doing that in AWS only. How do you handle that complexity? And how do you have that deep context and deep understanding of your environment immediately? Because you need that context to prioritize your tasks right now for your teams. The third element here is really that how do you now, even if, let's say, you know where you're impacted, and you even have a prioritized list. What's your process like in your organization today to mitigate it, to fix the problems? I think we are all feeling it. Organizations are still building those processes for cloud. They still don't have the right processes for cloud. When something happens with a container, a SOC team would pick up the phone and call an engineer, right? Organizations need tools like Wiz to help them process the tasks, route them to the correct teams, and put guardrails in place from preventing those issues from being redeployed. Wiz helps organizations build those processes, but that's really a huge, huge challenge organizations still have in the cloud. So organizations felt during Log4j that what they have today is not working. They were not able to solve this incident, to solve this problem. And that exactly shows how cloud requires a different approach in order to help organizations succeed. And I'll go over quickly, like, I think, the key points of this new cloud approach. So the first thing is we handle the multi-architecture environment, right? We scan across all those different types and layers of cloud services agnostically. You have one policy. You want to know where you're vulnerable to log for shell. Wiz covers all of that. Then Wiz was born with security and dev in mind. I can tell you from a product perspective, when we think of the customer, of course we think of cloud security engineers, but we also think about the dev. They are both customers of this platform. Then it's emphasizing the shift in securing by design, in prevention. Cloud has also enabled attackers. Attacks are super automated. Attackers are familiar with misconfigurations in cloud services because your architecture, in a sense, is also public. Like everybody's using the same AWS services. So organizations are shifting more and more to prevention. I don't want to wait until somebody exploits a log for shell instance. I want to prevent it. The next thing is obvious, right? It has to be frictionless. I mean, imagine in that week before Christmas trying to make people ask them why don't they have agents somewhere, right? That's ridiculous, like asking them to deploy something. It has to be frictionless, which Wiz does. And last but not least, looking at risks in silo does not work, right? You have to look at it together, because you have one job, reduce risk for log for shell, and you need one line of tasks to do that. So you need exactly to be able to find this case immediately. And that's, why Wiz that's what Wiz gave customers. That's why we helped them so much in log for shell. 